Hey everybody, so I thought I'd spend a little bit of gameplay time going through uh, the lab, which is I think the definitive sort of uh, first play game for when you first get alive. And I'll go through some of the menus too, um, so that way, you know, if you first get it, you can kind of see um, some of the desktop stuff that you can do. So uh, yeah, right now you can kind of see the recording software I'm going on. Um, so it literally comes up as like a screen. Um, so you can go, you have all your games listed. And without even like starting from the desktop, you can actually start your games from inside the VR. Um, you can even see your Windows desktop and background and all that stuff. So if you want to do something without leaving um, the Vive, you're able to. You can actually turn the valve. But uh, yeah, definitely one of the little cooler intros or I guess um, company slash screens or whatever you want to call it. I'm a little bit tangled up in the my headphone wire there we go so this game has like six or seven different uh, mini games that each have a, a different sort of concept and they're all unique in certain ways and that they kind of showcase it they're kind of like small little tech demos to kind of show what you can do i'm not quite sure why you have that screen that you just hit start and you go into the uh it's got to load again and you go into another part of the game but i mean it's it's there so we'll wait for this game to load. So um, already we're kind of in the, the main hub of the game. That has a little dog guy that kind of runs around. There he is. So you can actually pet him. He does different sort of little things. And you actually interact with him. It's kind of cool. So if I take, like for example, the earth, and I throw it around, he's going to fetch it. Pretty cool little idea. Once you finish a minigame, it gives you sort of different options that you can do to, to kind of play with. You also have a dry erase board that you can draw stuff on. Artificial unconditional love has just been discovered in Pocket Universe Lab 8. Congratulations. I'll throw that out there. Look, he's even gonna fetch the the, uh, the pen. We finished a uh, archery game, or I finished an archery game, so you can actually go pick up a bow and arrow and uh, shoot these little guys. And this is actually a lot harder than it looks, too. I always miss that guy. So uh, we'll hop into some of the games that it has here. So uh, one of the most straightforward ones is uh, Solar System. So if you're trying to show this game to like Somebody you know who's like a teacher, or your parents. Um, this is one of the cooler ones. I actually brought my parents over here uh, one time they came over and were like playing around the Vive. And um, my mom actually had a blast on this one. So you, you're you literally walking around a, a solar system. So um, again, you have like your little room that comes up in this little grid. Um, so you can kind of walk around within the, those bounds. But if you want to teleport, there's a button on each of the controllers. And you can actually select where you teleport to, so a little bit too close. We'll teleport to kind of where Saturn is. And you can actually walk over to the planet, and you can grab it and fling it around. Um, to my knowledge, all this stuff is actual scale, so you can actually hold Saturn next to the sun and see how, uh, how big it is in comparison. And if you don't want it anymore, you can actually toss it like a frisbee. So it's kind of cool. Um, one of the other neater things, too, is if this is an actual scale, you can take a planet like Mercury and actually compare it like to the size of, of the sun or, you know, the size of Earth as this floating around. So we can actually grab Earth, Mercury, I only have two hands, and hold them next to the sun and kind of compare like the actual size of them, which is like the trippiest thing. I, I never really realized you know, the sense of scale of all the planets. We don't really need Mercury, so we'll throw it away in the sun. Um, so you can take like the Earth, you can compare it next to Jupiter, and it's absolutely insane. And one of the things that's not really conveyed very well, um, if you're watching a video on 2D, is this is this is basically 3D. So the sense of scale that you get, it's like you're walking around a room. Like I can actually get, well, I guess I can actually. If I move this way and repossess myself, maybe. You can actually walk around and it's like, it's like right there. So like, I'm like, I'm going like this. That's where like Jupiter is. It's like, it's crazy. So you have the Earth, Jupiter, pick it up. You can move it, shake it around. 
I mean, there's only so much we can do in this game. So we can go push a button. Um, the way you navigate this game is you, you push a button, it comes with an orb, hold it to your head, and it will teleport you around. So now we gotta wait for it to load again. Probably should have installed this on the SSD partition, so that way it didn't take so long, but you live and learn. So the doggy's back. Hello, doggy. Has returned from an We're not really doggy, but I'm not really sure what you would call that. Human body, that one's kind of alright. There's not really much to see in that one. Uh, this one's kind of fun. This is kind of a, a lose-lose kind of game, but it's kind of cool in that it shows you some, uh, some different like 3D effects that you, you really can only do in the, a VR system. And you'll find that this game is that it instructs you. Um, it has you do like little gimmicks and, and things that, uh, that really kind of show off the platform a little bit. So he's going to tell you to do some stuff, so I probably have to wait for him. Can't really mess with that. You have now practiced on two incorrect rotors. Please open the correct row. Good. As a so like as you open these drawers, as you notice you're pulling it out towards yourself. And it's like you actually have a sense of scale. If you look into it, you look up like that, you're actually looking into it. Close the drawer to initiate contaminated pocket universe contingency protocol. I'll try not to talk too much, because this is one of more of those like one of those listening games. Opening drawers has been removed from your list of responsibility. Please locate the service bay door number and pull it. Now serving one. So the door opens and you actually see into this room. Like it's it's crazy. So if you get a sense of scale of this guy walking in, he's right here, so right here. So he, he's ultimately, you know, he's he's this tall and this wide. It, it's pretty insane. Like it's all basically happening right in front of you. As you can see from the schematic hologram, all aperture brand robots can be repaired by anyone with even a So it stretches things out and it goes from there to there. To begin repairing this unit, attach your multi-tool to its faceplate and pull as forcefully as possible. You may hear what sounds to a human like a oh, right that way. But rest assured, while robots feel good, please look in and press the button mark robot repair. Good. Step two. So, uh, to my knowledge, this part is a lose-lose kind of situation. I don't think that there's a, a way you can win this. But, um, basically it kind of shows off the fact that you can, you know, manipulate all these different parts, push stuff in, out, um, you can turn over here, come this way, move this stuff around. Lots of different things you can do. It's very detailed. It's got that valve kind of polish to it. There's not really much we can do here, to my knowledge. And... Yeah, we can't move that around. Sorry. As a boss of the floor, you can actually get a sense of perspective as, uh, as to how deep it is and how infinitely far it goes. I don't believe it. What kind of robot can't handle the simplest? Oh, it's you. See, this is cool, because you don't realize like how big she is. You've but it's the sense of scale is like enormous. It probably doesn't come out like when you watch it in 2D. For your own safety, please vacate this station immediately. Don't listen to him, you'll be fine. Also, let's be honest, your first day's been a bit of a disaster. Pretty it's probably cool. not the worst thing if you died. See, I really wish this was like a ride part where like it starts to move the thing and they're kind of like going around, but uh. I'm waiting for somebody to come out with a VR kind of roller coaster game. I know that I, I saw one on Steam for like 30 bucks, but 
Uh, I'm not about to, you know, drop 30 on a, on a really simple game. Because I'm pretty sure it's not polished yet, but I'm sure somebody's going to come out with one that's, you know, one, not $30, and, and two, um, that's, uh... I think you're overqualified for robot repair. I've got a better assignment for you. Uh, let's finish that thought. One that's, uh, very, very polished. That's a recording. He has to say that. Goodbye. And there's nothing really you can do here. And the game ends. So we'll go through probably one more. So again, you know, hanging out on a loading screen. A lot of a uh, lot of loading screens, but I mean that's kind of to be expected. So last one we can do. We'll use this one. So loading, loading, loading. Uh, this is kind of a cool one too. Through into kind of like that first person kind of a you know, shooting kind of stuff. So it almost looks like a little diorama. You can actually navigate around, move around the table. I think you can like move these little guys around. So let's go over here to this guy wearing the headset. And it puts us in the game. So Let's pick this up. Get a little bit of a package shot in there. Alright, I think we're ready. Let us shoot him real quick. I think we can get ahead a little bit. Nope, that's not. You get to feel like Katniss playing this game. There we go. This dude doing flips and stuff. It took me long enough to get him. I feel like this one tires out my arms though. First world problems. It gets easier the closer they get because you don't have to aim that far. Okay, so wave three. Almost headshot that guy. I'm just missing everything. There we go. And we're still 100% health. This guy's a lot easier to get. Just not good at aiming when they're far away. Oh, I hear somebody at the door. Needed both of those health balloons. As you can tell, it's quite enamored in this, or immersed, or however, whatever you want to call it. So wave seven. Give my arms a little bit of a chance to rest. If 
Please don't uh, hit the TNT, I wanted to save that. for the balloons. So this game's a little bit arcadey, but it's definitely kind of a, a fun little game to have. And it's free, it's the best part. It's like something you'd get if you went to like main events and it had some kind of like cool arcade game, but this is something you have in your, you know, spread in your house. are officially getting kind of tired. Well, I could switch arms mid-game. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I'll probably send them out. Uh, my 
be it. We're going down fast. Ah, uh, no. Ah, uh, man, I got the wave 16. Play around to see where you rank. I didn't even notice that. Well, let's see where we rank. I guess I have to let them ransack the castle first. Is that like... I want to see where I rank first. Can you just like... Maybe go back real quick? I wanted to see that update, but I guess not. So... Well... That's enough for today. Uh, let's see, where am I? Okay. Screen's back here, so don't know if any of the sound is coming out, but uh, yeah, again, thanks for watching. So again, you know, the lab, definitely a great game to uh, to try out if this is your, your first time on a Vive, and uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave me some comments. Uh, Y'all have a good one.